sensation, the best feeling imaginable. And because of that miracle, I can never lose hope again. I know now that even when you are in the depths of despair, when everything around you has collapsed, when you cannot see a way through, that way can be revealed in an instant, in a way you never thought possible. <clears throat> I can never give up hope again, no matter what the future may bring. That time in hospital was the single most influential time of my life. I was tested and I went through it. I wasted away and I suffered immensely. But then I was blessed with a miracle, the meaning of which will never leave me. I can get through anything. We as humans can get through anything. We may not know how, but I believe that that is not for us to know. I thought I had lost control that time in hospital, but I realize now I was never in control. There is a bigger plan that I do not know. In August of 2013, I was referred for a double lung transplant. My CF now is severe. My health and my lung function have both declined significantly over my 36, nearly 37 years. I have very tough, very stubborn bacteria growing in my amazing little lungs. This bacteria have become resistant to antibiotic treatment over time. This means I'm difficult to treat. I've had two pneumothoraxes, one on the right and one on the left. And after two, chances are good that I'll have a third or a fourth. One day I might not survive another. It's becoming harder to maintain a healthy body weight. Even with this appetite of four linebackers, my body has to work so very hard to keep everything going. When my doctors referred me for transplant, it was with the implication that things have gotten tough. Things are going to get more difficult in the times ahead. That is certain. Without a lung transplant, statistics suggest that I may not be around for long. And so after the referral, I completed the process necessary to be listed for a lung transplant. Comprehensive testing and assessment, a six week long pulmonary rehabilitation program up in Edmonton where lung transplants are done in Alberta. I have done all I need to do to eventually become active on the transplant list. It has been a long road, physically, mentally, and emotionally. But the problem with lung transplant is this. It's not a cure for CF. It is not guaranteed to work. I could be listed and wait three days for a call, or I could wait three years, or I might never get a call at all. New lungs may never come for me. A successful lung transplant could give me 20 more years, or a few more months, or I might bleed too much and never make it out of surgery. These are all things that could happen with transplant. Transplant brings risks. Risk of other complications, such as cancer and diabetes. Risk of rejection of the new lungs. If I had a transplant, I would be on immunosuppressant drugs for the rest of my life to help prevent rejection. Immunosuppressant drugs would do just that, suppress my immune system, leaving me more prone to infection and becoming seriously ill. With transplant, I wouldn't be out of the dark, ever. With transplant, I would be trading in one chronic illness, CF, for another. If a lung transplant was simple and predictable, a sure thing, an easy choice, I probably would have signed up a while ago. But I'm a complicated girl. I hear it from my doctors far too much. ITP is the biggest complication that comes to mind in neon flashing lights. Thinking of the logistics of a double lung transplant, where you're cutting out one set of lungs and stitching in another, there will be blood. Right now, I'm not ready to be listed. The risks outweigh the benefits for me, and I, I feel at this point I have too much to lose. But at some point, the scale may tip, 
and I will be ready to go down that road. But for now, I am holding on to these native lungs of mine. We've been through a lot together, and I'm not convinced I'm done with them yet. There is no cure for CF. There is no remission. I will never be able to look back and say, hey, remember that time I had CF? Wow, that was rough. Glad that's over. It will never be over. Life with CF is unpredictable. It can be scary, overwhelming, devastating. It can also be triumphant, invigorating, and joyful. I have felt weak, and I have felt strong. I have felt okay and average and mediocre too. I have been on top of the world, in the depths of despair, and lots of places in between. That is life with CF, but that's also just life. The thing is this, CF is my ground level. It exists before everything else. Life keeps happening all around CF. And as time goes on with a progressive degenerative disease, my health, my basic physical capacity to face the day, whatever that day may bring, is dictated first by CF. When I wake up in the morning, I think breathing. I think lungs. I think coughing. I think oxygen. Will this be a good day? Maybe just some good hours? Will I have the endurance to walk on the treadmill? Or is today just a day for a shower? What will breathing be like today? What's the weather like? Will it be humid or hot? Cold or windy? Because that will make it harder to breathe. Where am I going today? Where will I be able to park? Will I have to walk far? Uphill? Upstairs? Through a group of smokers gathered outside? Because that will make it harder to breathe. Will I have to stand or can I sit down? Will I have to lie on my back? Will I have to carry something or lift something or bend over? All this will make it harder to breathe. Will I forget something upstairs again and have to make another exhausting trip? Is my oxygen machine fully charged? Will I be able to plug in? Will I be talking or cheering or laughing or crying? Because that will make it harder to breathe. What if I cough? Let's face it, I'm coughing. What if I can't stop coughing? What if there's silence? What if the only sound is in the room is my coughing, my wheezing, my crackling lungs, the mucus deep in my chest clogging my airways? What if I can't breathe? What happens then? Will I make it upstairs? Will I catch my breath in time? Will I be able to sleep tonight? How many times will I wake up gasping for air? I'm so freaking tired. What I wouldn't just, what I wouldn't give just to go to bed, lie on my back, and fall asleep. One pillow to rest my head on. Not seven so I can sleep sitting up. What I wouldn't give to have lungs free of mucus so I could just get through the night without coffee. Instead, there's the drone of TV to block out the sounds of my uneasy, labored breath, my never-ending work to breathe. These are the questions I ask. This is what I think about each and every day. All this before the other stuff, the basic stuff, the stuff of life, like, what should I have for breakfast? Is it gonna be a good hair day? What's traffic like? Who just texted me? Cardio or strength at the gym? What should I get my mom for Mother's Day? Can I meet my friends for dinner this weekend? Should I start dating again? Where should I go on my next vacation? Who's gonna get a rose on The Bachelor tonight? You know the real questions of life. You don't think about breathing, and that's all I think about. Breathing makes everything else possible. You'll find you can't do much without it. When it comes easy, you don't notice it. When you have to fight and work for every breath, it can be hard to focus on anything else. 
CF has kicked me down more times than I can count. CF is a brutal disease, but through it I have come to truly love and appreciate my body. I used to think that my body was the problem. I thought my lungs were weak, inferior, and bound to fail me. I used to hate my body, hate the struggle within it, and I saw the battle line clearly drawn, me against my body. But what I have learned is this, my body is awesome. My body is amazing. No matter how many times CF knocks me down, no matter how this disease wears at my organs day after day, causes pain, breeds infection, steals lung function, steals my thunder, ruins the day, changes my plan, and gets in my way. No matter how many times CF does what it does best, my body keeps on fighting. It keeps on doing what it needs to do. It keeps trying to heal and rebuild, strengthen and recover. This is not a war against my body. This is all about me versus a horrible disease. None of this is my body failing me. My body, along with my mind and my soul, we are in this together against CF. The disease is the enemy, but my lungs are champions. I'm here before you now because my body rocks. <laughs> Not once. I just said that. <laughs> Not once has my body failed me. My physical health has declined over the years a lot. My lungs are scarred and inflamed and a breeding ground for infection. I have a quarter of the pulmonary function that I used to have. I need supplemental oxygen to breathe. But I can do amazing things with this body of mine. These lungs inside my beautiful native lungs. I think of them and I think of all they do. And I thank them. All that they've endured and survived. And they've never quit on me, ever. <clears throat> Once I made that realization that my body is my ally and CF the enemy, everything changed for me. When CF knocks me down, there is only one thing, only one choice, rebuild again. That's all. And so this brings me to my box of Q-tips. I was just going to do a quick tutorial because I really love ear hygiene. <laughs> a little too much. Actually, about a year ago, I was at the drugstore. I needed Q-tips. I saw the smaller travel size container, I think about this big, and beside it, this big box of 400. The large box, obviously, if we all remember from home economics, it's more cost effective. But at the time, I couldn't wrap my head around it. 400 Q-tips? I am not getting through a box of 400 Q-tips. Who am I kidding? So much can happen between now and the end of that box. I could die before I used them all up. And the way things were going, it was true. What if I don't use up 400 Q-tips? What if after I'm gone, they clean out my bathroom and they find this giant box, half full? What a waste that would be. They'll think I'm ridiculous. I guess it could just be that I'm cheap when it comes to my ear hygiene. Because I had a real dilemma that day at the drugstore. What should I do? Be reasonable and logical and buy the travel size. Or live on the edge and really go for it. Buy 400 Q-tips. This was a moment for me, a point to remember those lessons I have learned. I have no idea what tomorrow will bring. It could be sunshine, 